sun is gonna shine again Just wait and see Hold your head high The sun is gonna shine again On you and me It may be cloudy of the great Larry Jones, the host of Uncle Larry's TV and the proprietor of, that's the wrong word, producer, of Miralex Media. Miralex Me Media, Miralex Music. There you go. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you for opening up your studio. Thank you for being here. On tonight, thank you for all of you that are out there already. I see Lady Deb, I see Hatcher, he said he's at, Aaron is at work, He's but he's listening. And so many other of you are out there, and I'm glad that you joined us on tonight. Listen, we're going to um, go ahead and get started, because there's a lot. Thank you all so much for all the questions that you sent. I think we had, like, what, 20, 25? And I didn't even get them all. We'll make so, a dinner. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make a dinner, and then yeah. I have to come, and we'll do part two. Hopefully, we get them all in part two. If not, maybe he'll be gracious to give us part three. So, before we even get started, I know your history. Mm -hmm. I know your brothers. Okay. I know your sisters. Sorry to hear that. I, <laughs> 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 and I also know your beloved parents. Yes. I know them as yes. well. They're kind of like my biggest boosters when it comes to directing. Whenever I'm nervous or afraid, cool. they like, your mom especially. She's like, get they're it, get it, girl. Get they're it, girl. encouragers. All right. But I know, but everybody out there may not know. So, yeah. give us some of your history as to how you... 
uh, got started and what made you take this route? Because it's, mm. it's a lot of you all. It's a lot of us. And you all, each one of you kind of got yeah, a different, different route. route. Just yeah. in case you didn't know, this is Sir Walter Jones' brother. I had nothing to do with that. They just brought him home from the hospital one day and told me I had to move over. So just, uh, somebody else is going to be at the dinner table. Well, as you said, there's a, there's a lot of us. We're uh, from a musical family. Uh, my, my dad, actually my granddad was a guitarist. Oh, okay. Lawrence, Lawrence C. Jones Senior. Senior, okay. My dad is Lawrence Jones Jr., and I'm Lawrence Jones the third. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I know. I learned something today. Yeah. I'm Lawrence Jones the third. Larry is short for Lawrence. And uh, okay. so when my nephew, uh, Lawrence, uh, you know, the one that plays for, for everybody. Everybody. Um, everybody was getting us confused, so he hijacked my name. Thanks a lot, Lawrence. But no, <laughs> he, he, he honored our name, my name real cool. I like Lawrence. He's unique. Uh, and um, uh, so I got started. God, I'm dating myself. In the 70s. Don't worry about it. All right, so <laughs> I got started in the 70s. I started with my dad. My dad had a band. Right. Before yes. the Jones Brothers, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, this is something you don't know about. Okay. I'm, like, I'm like in the 70s with Alfros, and my dad was had a double neck guitar. Right, now that I know. Exactly. Right. And we were members of Rehoboth uh, Ministries now. Rehoboth okay. Church of God in Christ, Pastor Osmond Jones, which, are, which, which is, is my cousin. Right, right. Those are my cousins. Oh, okay. And uh, so he had a there was he had a bunch of members there. Arthur Jones was right. a beast on organist on organ. My really? cousin Arthur Jones don't everybody sleep on Arthur Arthur B Jones, but Arthur was a beast on organ. My cousin Willie was on drums. Willie Horton. Okay. And then you know we had saxophone players, the Hortons, and so it was a, it was a bunch of and they did music. So in the seventies, Rodney and myself. Caught the bug, Rodney Jones. Okay. Singer, we, okay. Lil Rod's dad. Right. So we caught the bug, and my dad formed the Jones Brothers, Brothers, which started with my dad, Rodney, and myself before Walter came on. He was okay. he was just too young, and then Walter later joined as the saxophonist. Right. Right. So right. Walter's a beast on. Oh, I saxophone. can slap yes, him because is. a lot of people just don't know. Walter can whoop a saxophone. Yes, up. he can. Yes, and he can. so during, actually, we joined the seventies. Bishop Ford would call us to do the tea. Now that's when I remember you. Right. Actually, this is even before. I'm talking in the seventies. But I. Oh, you remember that? I remember you okay. all. Right, right. I 70s. was little, okay. but I remember. Uh, we were little too in the seventies. <laughs> so in the late seventies, he would have these teas on Sunday morning right. in the old clock house. Yep. It was the, oh, no, the, okay, his, the, the historic Clark House that is one of Chicago's museums right now. Bishop Ford owned that house. It sat on the property, and we would come there and do his teas. Really? He, yep, on Sunday oh, wow. afternoons, and he would uh, he would he would have these, and Bishop Ford would encourage us. I was one. There sh probably was one before me, but I was one of the first people to bring an amplifier. In the St. Paul, a bass amplifier to St. Paul. Okay, now you're dating yourself. Yeah, it's going you, way you, back. Now, we're talking about, now you're bringing in yeah, history. We're talking about late 70s. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, First Jurisdiction, you know, everybody yes, was a member of First yes, Jurisdiction then. Yes. And then yes. The, the, the music just started growing. So I was blessed to, you know, to, at that time, you know, Steve Harris was yes. the organist. This was mm -hmm. in before Ed Showers. And uh, the the minister of music before Lavanya Whitley, even yes, okay. uh, before Lavanya Whitley, I can't think of his name uh, right now. I'm getting old, but he there he was the choir director before Lavanya Whitley, and then oh, came Lavanya Whitley really? after that. Oh, okay. Right, and uh, somebody's gonna somebody's gonna say it. Somebody's gonna uh, one of the old schoolers are gonna <laughs> gonna type <laughs> it in. But then Lavanya Whitley came, and you know, being under that tutelage. And then, uh, then I became a member of King of Glory. Okay. So yeah. now you got Kenny Lockhart, who, right. who was one of the best, best. choir directors yes. I have ever worked with. And I used to play for the National Church. Okay. So and Kenny was a beast. Now, uh, you know, I'm a musician, so I use words like beast. That means he was really bad, like, <laughs> good bad, like really cold, like a good bad, like a good bad. So help him out, David. Yeah, Come I'm, on, help I'm, your I'm brother on, out, David. Yeah. So he, you know, and so coming at, and then I was blessed to, you know, play with people like Ed Showers, mm -hmm. 
and then Aaron Little. Right. Um, uh, I mean, back then Terry Sanders was the like drummer. one of the state drummers. Yes, Terry Sanders was he's, cold. He's drummer. very good. And he's still good. yeah, he's, he's still, still good. good. And so you had all of these, and then uh, everybody would come to 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 St. Paul. Like the musicians would come. So that was one side. Okay. The other side. Oh Lord. Was you know Joneses have two sides, right? <laughs> the other side was. He said, Ru "Oh, Ruben Lightfoot." Ruben Lightfoot. Oh, he thank was, you. Oh, yes, really? yes, yep. Oh, okay, thanks, yep. David. Ruben Lightfoot. I knew somebody was. Was that my he, brother, David? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 See, see, he older than me, <laughs> so he he remembers. I didn't say things. that. He did. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go, there you go. So, um, um, uh, and then that's a whole nother show about what all my brothers are into. Right. So my brother David is tearing it up. Yes. And, uh, Vote for him, you yes, all. Like today's, up, the last, today's the last, last day. day. David Jones, find my brother David Jones, and he is up for an award. Yes. Go to his page and vote yes. for him today. Today Please. is the last day. Today He's is the last well day. Well deserved. Yes. All right. I voted multiple times. Yeah, <laughs> Don't know if that was legal, but uh, <laughs> oops. <laughs> but yeah. So that's what happened. You know, I was just I was blessed to come up in an era where you, we were actually experimenting at that time. Okay. Because you had a lot of, uh, you know, I was in the funk and the. Thumping and thumping, you know, not, we got reviewed right, right. back in the day. But this is, I felt that it was my music. So I was listening to like Stanley Clark. These are like, you know, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Fire I was listening to this. Yeah. And, and so it, it spawned um, um, a creative side. Mm -hmm. And so you had cats. I was blessed to be one of the ones, the bass players in the Chicagoland area, to kind of like usher in mm -hmm. thumping. You know, but you had other bass players in there that was doing it too, like Steve Huff. Yeah, like me and I Steve heard. Huff was tight back right. in the day. I remember him. And yeah. and and uh, Chris, Harris. you had all of these other these other musicians. We 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 were like experimenting with sound. We knew we wanted to change, and we wanted to add another element to the traditional choir. And so now today, like it's like. It's just it's just a norm. A norm, right? But we 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 caught a lot of flack ushering it. I'm sure a you lot did, of flack that was ushering. The, that was the time when things were kind of changing, yeah. and the younger generation was take you know yes. taking over from the older generation. Yeah. I remember we went to a church and and we got beautiful for literally having electric instruments in the church. Yeah, my dad brought us to a like it was like a Protestant church or something. And uh, 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 then we go back to this, the same church years later, and they're applauding. So it's, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. You know, it's just a, a, I don't want to say an evolution, but basically it is an evolution. what it is. It, it is, is an evolution. It is an evolution from the past into the present. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to, the thing I feel that most people forget right. is that they don't, you have to kind of mix the past in with the future so that it keeps going forward. This is like true. Like a remembrancer. This is true. Yeah. And we got to understand the world evolves. You evolve as a person, you evolve as an artist, you evolve as a musician. Mm -hmm. And if you're sure. a creator, uh, and a creator, creators are, you, you, you just, you're, you're creative in whatever area you, you're in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the old, sum of the old school church would just squash the creativity in mm -hmm. you and just like, no, this is the way we did it 40 years ago. What I liked about Bishop Ford, what I actually loved about Bishop Ford was he loved the old school church, but he was forward Ford, thinking. Right. Yeah. And he would encourage, encourage us, us. Yep. all the time yeah. to be especially musicians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, singers, not so much. Right, but the, right, the right. But he would encourage it because yeah. I, you know, I, I'm not going to talk about the the things that happened. But he saw a organist, and organists always think like they the, they the cheese, like they have to be the boss. Right. But he saw an, an older organist. I ain't going to call his name because we cool right now. <laughs> he saw him like. Chopping me down while I was playing. He stopped him right in the middle of service. Oh yeah, he would do that. And said, uh, "Cut that, cut that guitar." Right. And looked at him. He said, "I'm the bishop of this state." Right. Uh, exactly. But that was he that, was an encourager. That's what he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Cynthia Nunn. I was blessed exactly. to play with Cynthia Nunn. So you got all of these all of different uh, uh, geniuses. Right. Cynthia is a she. She is, is a genius. Let me phenomenal. tell you something. Yeah. When we, I know we don't like, it, and she would never, she would never, never say that about herself. No, she's absolutely not. But when I've, when you've worked with as many people as, as I work with, mm -hmm. you start to have a renewed 
appreciation for, for some of the musicians you 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 were blessed to play with. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a phenomenal thing. Mm -hmm. Um. So now we're gonna get into the questions. We got a piece. That's only a snippet yeah. of his history. He yeah. didn't have time to. Cause if he did, that that's a yeah. whole hour. I ain't gonna talk then, about. We, I ain't gonna talk about leaving church and then right, on we, Monday. We don't, we, no, giving we not Kelly know. No, we're not gonna know. We're not gonna talk about. We're not gonna. This but is anyway, the choir director's academy. Right. We're going to the choir director. We're going to choir directors, we gonna choir choir directors, directors right? right? All yep. of you out there that have ambitions. Or desires to uh, release a single or create, you know, do a CD. Is, this, is we still saying CD now? Um, album. 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 Are we back to album? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm it's like, a, it's, it's actually more it. people streaming now. So streaming just release and things a single. Releasing a single. And a lot of you have questions as, as to what you should do, how you prepare in advance before you even get to the studio. And I'm thankful that Larry took the time to allow us to be in his studio. I mean, it's a phenomenal place, y'all. In his studio exactly. with all of these gadgets, I mean, I, all I care about is how it sounds. You know, he can do all of that part. I just want to make sure the vocals is right and it sounds like me, right? Um, but we, I'm honored that he would do that. And uh, we're going to get to your questions. We may not get through all of them because it's quite a bit. But we're going to start with the general questions of, um, of, of a music producer, okay? So it's, uh, one of the questions was, how, how do we find a music producer that's compatible to you? I mean, you know, because right. just because a person is a producer doesn't right. necessarily you work with me. I, you know what I'm That's saying? That's a great question because Chicago has so many producers. Yes. And then Chicago has so many people that call themselves producers. He and, said that, right? And they have a, you know, like a, an inbox and some headphones, and now they're a producer, like a dime a dozen. Right. Um, and, and they're not really truly producers. But on the other hand of that, Chicago is full of great older and younger producers that a lot of people just sleep on. They don't even know that they exist. Mm -hmm. And so being secure in yourself, you acknowledge who the other... I've sent people to other producers. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, because I didn't want, I didn't want to work with them. I didn't feel like I was, a, I was the best fit for them. But I've sent people to other producers and vice versa. I mean, I and, and then, you know, I've, I've been blessed to not have to advertise. So mm -hmm. I, I have corporations like Guitar Center that send me people mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I, I, I do a lot of work quiet. I do a lot of work that you just, that you would just never know I'm working on, including film scores okay. that I really love doing now. Okay. And so there's, but there's a lot of great producers here in the city. And I would say to search them out, find them out ask around. Everybody knows somebody that knows somebody, right? Mm -hmm. So you find out who the good producers are. I mean, you got cats out there. Ernie Allen is, 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 is another great producer. I mean, you got younger ones coming up now. Uh, then you got, you know, greats like the Percy Beatties and, 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 and um, Curtis, mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, uh, Lindsay. Yeah, and so, Lindsay. yeah, you, I mean, these, these guys are, are great producers, you know, and if, if, if you think that their sound, or if you heard something that they've done that you like, hit these guys up. They're they're great producers, you know. But then you got guys that are not producers that are choir directors or they're keyboards. You gonna spend more money and and not have a finished product. Okay, so we so if I'm looking for a producer, then mm -hmm. I probably not necessarily. So my first step would probably be to listen to the sound, the right. music that they have already produced. Yes. And because I mean, I mean, me, I'm an old school choir mm -hmm. girl, but also I think my theme is acapella, and yeah. I like the little, you right. know, Caribbean and the Latin and the bossa nova, right. and just the pure African sound. Yeah. So I would, I, so the best thing for me to do would be like to search around and see who would be more. Of a, so I think where I'm coming from is there a person that's more like a choir producer, yeah. or versus a like a solo artist. Uh, yes, I would say yes, yes, but a cautionary yes. Okay. And here's why. Okay. Right? Here we go. So, let's say you have a very traditional, so a lot of choir people that, that approach me have a 80s choir sound and that's it. Mm-hmm. And what I'm going to do is try to prepare it for today's audience, mm -hmm. Right? I always think radio when I'm mixing. I always think radio when I'm uh, recording or mm -hmm. producing. I always think radio. And because if you're not going to put your best foot forward, just don't, just don't do it. 
Mm -hmm. So you want to be careful about, okay, well, this one recorded this in 1985. I want that. So I'm a choir, so I need to go with him. You might know, some. the wise people know that they're stuck with an 80s sound, and they want to bring it. Mm -hmm. So take a gamble on even one of the younger cats. Hey, this is me, but I want to experiment with this, and mm -hmm. I want to do this with it. Uh, okay. You know, but it is good to work with someone that have worked with choirs. With choirs, okay. I would say to pick a good producer, really, above, now this is going to sound crazy, above their sound is where their mind is right now, where their creativity is right now. Oh, okay. And uh, you want to find someone that's going where you're going. You can have a producer that's hungry to produce a choir, mm -hmm. and he might contact another producer. I have other producers come here and mix. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of ghost work. Oh, okay. I've done a lot so of ghost work. So you all do a lot of collaborations. Oh, yeah. Stuff. No, not just collaborations. Collaborations, but... I, I mean, do collaborations, collaborations but, but I've got some producers that come here to... And oh, okay. have me to produce it. Oh, okay. Or, or mix or help mix. Okay. And they put their name on it. My name is nowhere on it. Oh, wow. Yeah. And they, because they want... They have their sound, but they want a part I of my sound. sound. And so that's, when, when you're secure in what you do, you have no problem with that. Okay. Yeah. So one of the, um, one of the viewers out here, he said, can you define what a producer, I think that's one of the questions anyway, mm -hmm. said, well, yeah, what is a music producer responsible for? And he's saying, what does a music, what, what does a producer do exactly? Mm -hmm. Okay, you know what? Come on now. You yeah. got another question behind this already? <laughs> but we're going to get to it. So he's saying, what does a music producer do? Because, I mean, in my mind, I think, you know, we come in here and all you do is you just shift the buttons and, right. you know, whatever. But what do you really do? I mean, do you take us from the beginning to the end? I mean, do right. you just stop in the middle? I okay, mean, here's what I'm going to start with what music producers don't do. Oh, music don't. producers don't get your voices ready to record. Ooh, you do that before you get into the studio. You okay. get so if you're a choir, you want to rehearse and rehearse this choir and get them drum tight before you come into the studio or before you do a live album, right? Okay. And um, and because you don't want to be rehearsing on, I'm not cheap, <laughs> and you don't want to be rehearsing on on on, on your, your time, dime. right? On my time and your dime. Because, <laughs> hey, you, you want to do that? I'll let I'll, you. You want to rehearse it? Ching, ching. Right. It, it means much cheaper for you to rehearse that back at the church or at your house. And, and to be honest with you, I don't take those. Okay. I'll just, I'll shut it down and say you, you're not ready. Because that's, I'm not there anymore. I've done many, many sessions of that. I've been doing this for 35 years. Oh, wow. And so I, I, I just, it's just not where I'm at. You got other cats who do that. Mm -hmm. You know, you might as well just find you a studio and just do an hourly rental thing if you're going to be rehearsing. Oh, wow. But so what a producer does now is it, it's, 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 it's different from genre to genre, right? So in the hip hop genre, if he's got a MP3 beat machine, right? Mm -hmm. He can make a beat and call himself a producer. And and today's standard, he's a producer. So he'll what? send it to, you know, Jay-Z or whatever. He likes it. Now he's a producer. Mm -hmm. Right? But in gospel and R&B, that's not even scratching the surface of what a producer is. All okay. right? So uh, let's say a producer, let's say a choir wants to do a live album. Yes. All right? Which is most a of them, major right. undertaking. Right? right? Now, myself, I've done, I've done a couple of them, but I would say the best... Uh, live album I did, I have a business partner mm -hmm. who I would, if anybody hits me with a live project, I'm calling Tony McClain. <laughs> okay. Tony, Elder Tony McClain, Faith Temple, Church of God in Christ, Evanston, Indiana. <laughs> because not only is he my brother, but he, he takes, he helps to take care, there's so many moving parts. He helps to take care of the business. Okay. He knows how to schedule things. Uh, so me, I come to, to the musician's rehearsal, I come to the choir rehearsal final after y'all gotten it all done. So, it, it, but you, you know, it depends on the level that a uh, producer you get. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I'm going to make sure it's tight on a live recording. Right. Mm -hmm. But also I will help you with song selection. Like if you, you know, 
And that's not all all the time. They'll sometimes they'll come and say, Hey, we got these twelve songs, this is what we want to record. Okay. So then you you but if you ask me, I'm gonna tell you this one don't belong in this project. Okay. Right? Uh I'm gonna make sure that I find at least three cuts that's gonna be radio ready, radio play. Mm -hmm. So that means it it can't be fifteen minutes long. It needs to be under four minutes for radio play. Under four minutes. Under radio four play. minutes, y'all. Under and four so, minutes. So that's a producer does that. He picks the studio. In my case, I own the studio, Ooh, but most of good. most producers don't. So they'll pick the studio, and they'll pick the musicians that you record with. A lot of producers do that because they have a sound that they want consistent, and they know the musicians that's going to execute it. Oh. Exactly. Okay. That's just, we're not finished with it. The uh. a producer also has to be Dr. Field. You'll come in one day and <laughs> you just giving me crap and we can hear it. Mm -hmm. And we have to shut it down. What's wrong? Nothing, nothing, nothing. So let's sit down and let's talk. So now we got to talk to you, get your mind right, so you can get back on that mic and kill it. And so that's, it, it, all of this is encompasses what the producer does. So the producer is getting you from start to finish. Okay. And once he hands you that final master, he's done. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. It's up to you to pr produce it, to uh, promote it. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of people miss, have a misconception. Yeah, I did too. It okay. is never a producer's job to promote your music. Never. It is never a producer's job oh, wow. to promote your music. It's up to you to promote your music. Now, I give people direction before they leave. I say, hey, you need to do this, this, and this. And it's worked. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are lazy, and they. a lot of people have recorded singles and CDs, and they have never gotten out. So uh, if you're doing live recordings here in the Midwest, you use Tim, Tim Powell, mm -hmm. right? Mobile. So... Tim told me some years ago, because I, I went to a lot of, he said probably out of, he says probably out of 50 recordings, for every 50 recordings, one are, one of them are successfully released. I've been to many live recordings that never got off the ground. Wow. Yeah, and most of the time, it's because of paperwork. What I mean by that is you got, you're doing an album, you got 12 songs, and you've got six writers. And then one of the writers at the last minute, after the recording, Go well. I don't like the way this this is going. I'm pulling, I'm pulling my song, and you've got it recorded, mixed, and mastered, and that happens to be the hit song. Now you can't release the project, right? Because wow. of paperwork, because you didn't get your business taken care of, right? So yeah. there, so it's a multifaceted job. Even though you you it's streamlined and you take them from beginning to end, and right. you just really make sure that everything is. Is done correctly, but at that certain point, yes. you also have the business side, and exactly. you also so. And it's that's not the producers, right? The paperwork the is not the producer. The, the the producer is his job is solely to produce you a great sound. That's it. The paperwork is something you need to do. Oh wow! Yes, okay. you. That's something you need to do. I hope hopefully that sheds some light on the question. Okay, and then he said, what's the difference between mixing and mastering? That's a good one. Yes. Because I, so mixing, they, everything seems the right. same to me. So mixing is, so uh, mixing is, I have, you know, I got all of these tracks. I don't know if you can see that. That light is probably shining on it. So mm -hmm. I have all of these tracks to this song, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say I got, I've, re I've got the bass guitar, lead, keys, B3, uh, full choir, and then stacking on that. So I got 84 tracks. I got to mix all of these tracks into a stereo track. Into one. Into one stereo track. And I got to make it sound good. And I got to put in place everything in its own frequency, in its own position. And you got to cut it. Because if, if everything is sounds mono, it sounds mono. So now I have to make this come together. It's like a crossword puzzle. Okay. And it's like a puzzle with many pieces, and you have to strategically put the pieces in the right places to make it sound good. That's where all the work is in the mixing. 
Okay. All and the work. Then, it could be mastered in hours. So what's mastering? Is it so, just like your no. final? Right. Like, so mastering, what mastering is, is you send it off to a mastering house to get it mastered. So now mastering is taking the finished mix and just adding some sheen to it, some polish to it. You can't, you can't take out the bass. You can't take out the vocals because it's now it's a stereo track. So now a lot of guys master. I can master. But to get a true master, and any true uh, uh, producer will tell you this, to get a 100% red map true master, you need to send it to a mastering house. And it's not that expensive. Oh, really? No, no. A couple hundred dollars, you can have a song master. So you can have a song master for $74. Yeah, but you, don't, you want to allow yourself a couple hundred dollars to get it professionally mastered. Okay, so most of the time is spent mixing. Oh, yeah, that's where you, yeah, yeah, you spend hours upon hours mixing. So during that mixing time, is that when we may do overdubs and things of that sort? That's still recording. That's still recording. Right. Okay, see, so, you can tell how much right. I know. I've so, <laughs> so I'll take you step by step oh, okay. real quick because I know we got more questions. Right. So let's say you did a live recording at your church, mm -hmm. right? But a lot of choirs now, they do studio. Yeah, I kind of, yeah. All right, but so now, let's say you do a live recording at your church, right? Mm -hmm. You called out the truck, you got everybody ready, the, the band is tight, they ready, the choir is tight, they ready, and that night we you record 12 songs, mm -hmm. which nobody's buying Nobody full albums anymore, right. so we can mm -hmm. talk about that later. <laughs> All right, so you, you recorded 12 albums. Now, Tim Powell has it in the truck. He has the master on a hard drive. He has every all of those tracks that went, let's say, let's say it's, it's 30 tracks at that point. No, let, you know, let's say it's, it's 32 tracks at that point. The choir, the band, right? Mm -hmm. So now we take the hard drive from the truck, bring it to the studio, pipe it up. So I deal with Logic and Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. So we pipe it up. Now we have to mix it. We have to make sure the snare, the kick, Tom 1, Tom 2, Tom 3, the overhead mics, the room mic, that's just the drum set. Oh, and those are all have their own channels. So you're at you already got nine channels already going on the drums, right? Mm -hmm. They're all recorded. You have to mix that. You have to mix in the bass guitar, the lead, the B3. You have to mix in the choir in the background, mm -hmm. right? So all this gets mixed in, right? Now, let's say you want horns and brass and strings. Now we call that colors. Now you have somebody come in and they record in the studio the colors on top of the tracks mm. to give it to make it up to just to make to sweeten the mix up mm -hmm. so you know for one song for every one song you can you know sometimes i spent as much as 10 hours if it's a single i spent as much as 10 hours mixing one song and that's just like your first run through all that's that. just the mix oh my God. all right but before i start mixing now i'm going to call the musicians in first to punch in all the mistakes from the live recording. Okay. All right. right. I knew that coming in somewhere. So now, I always go with the musicians first. Let's clean these punches up. So I have my musicians come in, and they miss a note here or there. They come in the studio. Boom, 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 boom. They knock it out. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, we do what's called vocal stacking. Okay. Now that vocal sounds Vocal stacking little... is going to take... Longer than the recording session. Did. Right now, that part. I now remember. you're gonna take so all of that, all of that big vocal you heard. I'll put mm -hmm. the secret. All that big vocal in the background you heard mm -hmm. on my uh, um, on Keon's, Keon's single, forecast. which I'm gonna do my own live record. Uh, anyway, but anyway, uh, uh, revamp oh, remix. <laughs> that was four people. Really. But that is when a producer knows what he's doing with placing. That was only four people. Wow. Right. Right. So what you do is stacking at this point. So some people will stack with two tenors, two altos, two tenors. You can go three, three, three. Mm -hmm. Some be, some go one, 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 one. Some go right. four, four, four. It all depends on what sound, what sound you get. You want. The bigger the sound, the more people you have stacking. So so now let's say you're dealing with three sopranos, three altos, three tenors. You re, you go through the whole song and stack each part. Every soprano has to stack four to six times sometimes. Mm -hmm. Per track on each song. Right. And then you got to do that with the altos and, and the, the tenors. tenors. Right. 
And I'm with you on that part. So I now, that. now uh, 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 42 tracks has turned into 62 tracks. I'm just <laughs> throwing numbers out. I know right. it's not you know, mathematically, mathematically correct. Right. Thank you for that word. <laughs> so now I got to take all of these tracks and mix them. Oh, wow. So you, sometimes I'll tell people, hey, it's going to take me, you know, it's going to take me a couple of weeks to go on here and mix this right and do and get the sound that I want. Right. Right. So that's a lot of hours that people don't understand that producers have to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And so after we get everything mixed just the way you want it, we have to bounce it down to a stereo track, which is a left and right audio mm -hmm. track. Right. And now that file is flat. You can't go in there and, and change. change anything. If you want to change anything, you got to go back to the full mix uh -uh. and change. Oh, no. So that decision is made normally with the artist and the producer. Okay. The producer says, hey, I've got you ready. And you go through a full run through of all the tracks with the producer to get the artist okay. Then at that point, it's sent off to master. To master. Or, you know, I can do a quick master here. And I can do a master where the average ear wouldn't be able to tell if it's been professional or not. But my my theory is, why cheat for two hundred dollars? Right, right. Just go ahead and just have a right. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's that's awesome. And one other thing, um, the uh, question was how important it is. And you gave us a a thorough uh, explanation for yeah. producers and what all they do. Yeah. How important is their working style? Like how they work. Like some right. people work, some people can get in the studio and they can stay 12 hours, you know, because right. you have to kind of be with them and, or either be in communication with the person, right? Right. Well, here's the thing. On a live recording, if you got the right producer, mm -hmm. you can go home and tell the producer to do what you want. Oh, okay. I get it. Do your thing. You could tell, uh, that's what normally happens to me. Uh, they'll say, so we got everything, we cool? So you're going to do your thing, right? That means, because you know what? Right. I can work better without you here. Well, thanks, Larry. I'm, <laughs> Larry get out. I keep no, thinking about it. <laughs> Thank you. You know, because I'm, you know, I can tell you right now, I'm right. one of those people that if right. I do a record, I'm like, right. like this. Cause, I'm like, cause, what you doing? Because you, 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 you know why? why? It's going to take me more time with you sitting here. You know why? Why? Because I'm going to take all these tracks that we just recorded, I'm going to flatten it. You're going, why you do that? Now I got to turn around and explain <laughs> Like you doing and now, then, right? Right. So, <laughs> why did you just mute the bass? I'm trying to see how it sounds by itself. Okay, why did you just cut the vocals up here? And then I'm going to turn to you and say, here, can you go get a sandwich in Minnesota and bring it back? Right. And you see what I'm saying? Right. So, um, right. And, and most producers would just do tell you that. That's why we call you on the end. Yeah. When it's, well, that makes when it's sense. like 90% mixed, right? That and all sense. you got to say is, I like a little more vocal here. That's easy. Right. And just then to start from square one. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to take a little detour before we go to the next section. Let's go. How difficult it is to work all of this? Very difficult. That's why. Right, that's why everybody's not a producer. Okay. I, I, I believe this, and, and this is just my opinion. There's other great producers out there that might disagree with me. Producing is a gift. No, I believe that. that. It, 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 it is a gift. Mm -hmm. Just like um, um, the edge that my family had in the music, the playing instruments, mm -hmm. that it was a gift. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I could take you to the, the, to the Chicago Symphony, and I know somebody who plays with a symphony, mm -hmm. right? If you walk a, a, in front of him and take his music away, he He's, lost. He lost. He they lost. Are, they are lost. And you yes. can you can go to a church and, and he'll be like, where's the music? Right. Right. That's true. Because That's he true. can read and he's intelligent enough to read, read. but he doesn't have the, the gift. The gift or the ears. Right? To, right. Or the ears. Mm -hmm. So there's people that have the gift. Like Ed, Ed didn't start out, Ed Charles didn't start out uh, reading. Mm -hmm. It had the gift. Rodney Easton started out reading. He has the he gift. Has the I, that gift. I know. Rodney Easton. Right? Yes. Yep, yep. I saw him from. Like I, little from, guy. When I he, saw him from start. Actually, right. he'll he tell you. He couldn't speak and touch he'll, the pedal. He'll tell you. <laughs> I gave him one of his first gigs. He'll tell you. But Rodney has the gift. Mm -hmm. Now, he had a phenomenal teacher, yes, which was Cynthia Nunn. Right. 
But Ronnie had the, the gift. Right, he does. And so that gift is going to take you, this is one time where your gift will take you further than your knowledge would. Exactly. It does. Your feet will go places your feet will never tread. Right, that's true. Now, um, as the, now we got a taste of that. Actually, when he said that earlier about, you know, here, here's something, go to Minnesota and, you know, don't, you know, don't take your time and don't come back. He's really not that harsh. He's very, he's direct. But someone had the question saying, how do you approach um, the sensitive task of discussing changes and rearrangements with the artist? Like if, if, right. if, if a song comes out and it's just, it's just whack. messed up. It's whack. And we it's just like they think, they think they're, you know, it's the bomb. They think it's the bomb and you sitting there like, I got to see. And you yeah. sitting there like, let me tell you. Okay. So how do you? All right. So uh, I'll tell you this. I had an artist come here and... Um, my mom said, it's a gift, no doubt about it. Amen. That's true. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Uh, it's true. Um, so if somebody comes in mm -hmm. and they go, and they've never recorded before. Oh, okay, yeah. I want this. I want the, I want the guitar to go, wee, wee, wee. I want them to go, ah, and, and you sitting there and you're going, uh, 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 -huh, uh, -huh. uh -huh. and that's it. And then I want this on top, I want this on top, and that's it, right? And right. I've, had a, I've had a few come in here, and I'll just do exactly what they told me to do. Oh, right? no, you did. Yeah, I do exactly what they told me to do. And I just look at them. And then at the very end, they ask me, what do you think? And I turn to them and I go, it sounds like garbage. Yeah. <laughs> so why would you go to a doctor and tell them, I want you to cut me right here, stitch it up, and then... <laughs> that's what we do. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> Instead of... Drawing from the professional, right? Right. So I said, I tell, I told the, the last person, never do something that stupid, right? To come to somebody that does something and don't allow them to do, do it. it, exactly, right? And so I'm, I'm direct with that. Right. I'm very direct with that. Exactly. But I do it in a way where they understand. Right. And I said, hey, let's try this. And it never fails. As mm -hmm. soon as I take them another direct, wow, I didn't know you can. That's, that's, well, <laughs> man, that's, and I'll go. So then, uh, so now, you know what they do? What? They go, okay, let me, let me let, let you me, drive. Let me, right, let, let me, me let you drive. Right, because right? I just stepped on your bus. Right. And I want to drive. tell you. Right. right. So that's, I, you know, I say a, a producer has to be direct in that and say, hey, I know you have this. Mm-hmm. But what I hear is it's gonna not. is well, yeah what you, what you hear is two but I you know what I hear is ten mm -hmm. but be at least hear the other person because mm -hmm. you can always say no nah, I'm not feeling it and let's go back right yeah next right, right, right. so while we're there um, what when you okay you produce Keon's um, song mm -hmm. at Forecast and we were I was directing and he was. Signing or whatever you want to call it, we was Acting up straight, food. straight up clowning on that yeah. in the beginning. So if you missed it, you got to yeah. <laughs> go back. We we'll play it all. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so, but what if if we have a song? Right. We hear it. You hear? It, just say you didn't hear his song before. Right. That was your first time. I mean, yeah. I have my feel because yeah. I'm a director. Right. So I'm looking for something specific. Mm -hmm. The vocals. I'm right. like, okay, how's it flowing? Does it make sense to me right. in what I'm saying? Does it move? Does it work with my body movements when I do whatever I do? Right. When you hear a song, mm -hmm. what do you listen for? Well, I will tell you if you listen to my uh, if you listen to my music on my phone, mm -hmm. you wouldn't know if I was a fourteen year old white girl in ponytails <laughs> or if I was a seventy eight year old black man from the south. You would not <laughs> you, know you, you would. because I listen to everything. Mm -hmm. Because guys my age, I'm 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 fifty four. Guys my age and older. We came up in an era where the radio station, like I would listen to classic rock. So yeah. you would go from classic rock and then they'll turn around and play Stevie Wonder all mm -hmm. on the same channel. And then Earth, Wind & Fire, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. then Chicago with a lot of brass. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, my, my palette is very wide, right? Mm -hmm. Usually, like Keon's song, mm -hmm. I wrote that overnight. Oh, okay. And believe it or not, you know what... Two things that spawned me to write that song forecast. Mm -hmm. Number one, he was getting his degree in meteorology. Re oh, He's yeah. He's a meteorologist. Yeah, 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 that's right. Forecast. Right. Right? But right after we had this conversation, they had that school shooting in, in Florida. 
Oh. And these kids were, were, they had the senator in, these kids were hurting. My heart was going out for them. And I wanted to encourage them. And so, you know, God always wakes me up at 11, 12, 12, 30, 1 o'clock. And I sneak down in my, in my, I sneak down and I just pipe stuff up and I start writing. Mm -hmm. And by morning I had that song wrote. Because it was literally to encourage not the church, but the world. Mm -hmm. So I wrote those. If you really listen to the lyrics, mm -hmm. I wrote this to encourage the world. And I throw a scripture out for them to go read. Read. Yeah, I caught that. I actually got approached by someone that doesn't go to church. And he says, you was, you in the song, you say Philippians. And he said, I went and I found it. And mm -hmm. he was like, I needed that right then. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I was trying to do with that, like, I was trying to lift people up with the song. Right. So when we do, when, so when you're listening to a song, yeah. you you listening to it in a totally different right. angle. You don't really focus okay, on like Okay, so you, the, you're saying more the listening to, not the creating right, part. Right, right. I'm sorry, that's I both. misunderstood. No, that's yeah. both. No, that's part of it yeah. because then that gave us a background as to what you're right. getting ready to say now. Like, what you know, what you listening to. I and always what you listen can. to the hook first, right? And it's, the reason why it's called the hook is okay. because it hooks you. You That's sound why, like psychology. Like, right, it right. is, it is. They call it the hook because it hooks you, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, let's say Kurt Franklin's smile. Right. You don't know all the words, you no. know. Da, 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 smile. Right. Da, 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 da. And you're like, hey, smile. Smile's a hook. Right, right, right. right. And then uh, with choir songs, they call it the vamp. Right. Right, uh -huh. the vamp, mm -hmm. right, right. Uh, uh, caught up. Caught up in the rapture, and you know, and that's the hook. Right. That's the vamp, right? right? So that's what catches you, right? Right. So now that's the right. That's the foundation. So when you first hear it, you're not gonna hear. It. You're gonna. You're not gonna remember the lyrics. No. You're gonna remember the hook. Right. Then you build on that with the verses. The verses tells you what the hook was about. The mm. verses is the backstory. Mm. Okay. That's what it it builds to the hook. So when I write. God always gives me a hook first. Sometimes I'm listening to a preacher and he'll say something and go, bam. And next thing you know, I'm in the car and it hooked me. That's the vamp. Mm -hmm. And I'll go home and start writing verses behind that. Okay. Sometimes it's something my wife said. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's it's spawned by a conversation, mm -hmm. right? Dear mama, uh, I don't know if you right. know, dear mama, right. I was thinking about my mother. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to sound odd. I was thinking about all of my friends that have lost their mother when mm -hmm. I wrote that song. Believe it or not, oh, okay. compiled with my mother. So I was thinking about uh, Terry Sanders. Me and him are great friends. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about uh, 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 my friend Tony McLean. Mm -hmm. I was thinking right. about all of my friends that have mothers that's lost. That's, that's what's crazy about the song. Mm -hmm. And I began to, I know a lot of you guys are not going to roll with this, but Tupac, one of my favorite endearing songs is a song by Tupac called Dear Mama. And yeah, he was close to his mother, though. Right. But Very. if you hear the song, you can feel his soul mm -hmm. in this song by the lyrics. And so I took that concept and I started writing the lyrics, in, in, but using the way I feel. About mom. Not your mom. You're right. Okay. And so, yeah. Hopefully. All right. Yeah. That, I mean, that, I mean, because sometimes, you know, everybody, yeah. when they hear a song, they hear something different. They hear something different. Some people get caught yeah. up on the bass. Some people hear the drum. You know, it's just like so many different things. You know what's a crappy song? What? A song without a hook or a vamp. That's not a song, is it? it and, it's, and out there. it's out there. Uh, it's, it's, it's out there. <laughs> it's, it's out there. It's, it's, nobody knows about it. That's because it's crappy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Um, one of the other questions, well, we got so many of y'all. I'm trying to get through them. Um, who, and this was probably very, I hate to do this to you, but they, they want, somebody was asking, who are nope. your favorite? Oh, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> no, no. I was just joking. <laughs> who are your favorite producers working in the industry now? Because there are a lot of them there out there. A lot and, of them out and, there. And, Some of us, a lot of you guys are not going to, uh, know who he is, but David Foster. Uh, I'll give you a picture of him so you can post it after this is over. 
David Foster. Is he a classical writer? Or he does string arrangements. Yes, Carol he's, of the Bells. Yeah, he yes. discovered okay, Celine Dan. Dion. I love that. You know, he that. does stuff with you know Michael Bublé, Celine yeah. Dion. He's but a lot of people don't know he also produced some of Earth, Wind, and Fire's biggest hits. Yes, back David in the Foster? Seven, David Foster. Oh, wow. Chicago, no, I didn't. He also produced some of Chicago's biggest hits. The reason I like him is you wouldn't think this great string arranger mm -hmm. would be able that to. That versatile. Exactly. And so that's, he's one of my favorite producers because it's strings. And a young man out there, A.T. Jones, uh, he does, he posts a lot of stuff on Facebook. Okay. Uh, string arrangements. Right, so I always look at not the obvious. Of course, I love Quincy Jones. I, I love what he did as a producer. Mm -hmm. um, but my favorite producers are specific in certain areas. Areas. Okay. So I like this producer for his string arrangement. I like this producer of how he makes his low end sound, meaning the kick drum and the bass. Um, you know, so it's different producers like that. So you, okay, I'm not trying to take his whole yeah. whatever. So you kind of draw on everybody. On everybody. Like, take a piece. Okay. Exactly. Because, I mean, that's how yeah. I direct. I, it's yep. not one set person yeah. I'm looking at. Exactly. I just watch a, lo a lot of people, and when I kind of draw from them. I'm going to throw some names out. When it comes to compression and surroundness, mm -hmm. I, I like uh, Percy Beatty has, when you listen to anything yeah. he produced, mm -hmm. it has a, the, the, the mix has a Real nice round compression Pression. to it. Yeah. And you know who else a lot of people sleep on? Ferris Evans. Really? Ferris Evans from, um, I know a lot of you know him, but some of the younger ones are probably sleeping. Probably, on. right. Ferris Evans has this nice round bottom mix that I really enjoy listening to. Everything he puts out, you're going to get a consistency and that nice round compressed mix. Okay. And uh, so I listen to s different producers for different uh, uh, pieces. And so, so how does that affect you, like when you're mixing? Yeah. Because I I know yeah. everybody doesn't matter what you do. Right. You have your own set yes. style and sound. And like I yes. mentioned the other week, it's phenomenal how all of us. Yes. Now I'm nowhere near the type of organist and drummer. You know. Even among my cousins, the guys are the ones right. that play, and they right. are phenomenal. You know my cousin Sam Scott. Yeah, Sam. Sam. Very, a, he's I, a great producer. I saw him at a funeral in, yeah, in Jackson, Mississippi. <laughs> I know he's your he's, cousin. Right. He's a phenomenal Shout out producer, to Sam Scott. Uh, drummer, bassist, yeah. Yeah. organist. He's, yeah. he's all of that. And I have yeah. quite a few other cousins, yeah. Peter, Jerry. They all yeah. are very, very, very gifted. Right. And it is amazing to me how we can all hear the same notes, yep. but we sound totally different. Right. So in being a producer, mm -hmm. I'm just extrapolating, as my father would say. Mm -hmm. Big I word. would think. Stra right. Anybody got a thesaurus? <laughs> That's from my dad, y'all. He's extrapolating. Extrapolate. Right. Um, I would think that each of them mm -hmm. would affect you when you... It does. Have this more because you have right. your sound. I do. But then it, the ability yeah. to be able to hear somebody else and bring that in. Okay. I produced a country single. Really? Yep. Some years ago. And okay. it won first place in Nashville. Really? Yes. For So they had this competition called, there was a company called Sterling. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had this competition. They, at that time, this was about six, seven years ago, about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. They had, on their website, they had uh, a half a million uh, viewers, mm -hmm. and they had this radio competition where it was all new music, and you submitted, and it was like the top ten. Oh. And the girl that I produced it for, Chris, what was her name? Crystal Blocker. She won first place for two weeks straight, every night. Really? Yes. She came here with a guitar and just was playing real fast, and that's all she had. <laughs> but it was just. It was like it it, 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 she had no bridge. Mm -hmm. and she had no, so I put the song together, Guitar Center sent it to me. Mm -hmm. I put the song together for her. And, but for two weeks straight, I listened to nothing but country and western. In order to get your mind. To get my mind wrapped mm -hmm. around that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually finna do a rock album, in total, a full rock album oh, for, uh, what's the blues players? Uh, I can figure his name in a minute. Uh, he's got a club downtown, a famous blues player. But his 
guitarist. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm contracted to do a full rock album. Oh, wow. Because uh, I know the guitarist. And he wants to do something, he wants a different sound, though it's rock. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm going to do, I'm going to produce, uh, co-produce with him mm -hmm. the 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 whole and entire album. Oh, wow. So, but I put my own elements on top of it. Right. So if I, if I and, and I'm a bass player, but I love strings. So when I'm scoring mm -hmm. strings, I listen to, a, when I'm adding strings to a song, mm -hmm. I listen to a lot of David Foster. Yeah, he's, I listen he's to a lot good. of string arrangements. He's yeah. very good. He's yeah. very good. All right. Um, one of the other questions. Um, I think we we only went through eight, y'all. <laughs> eight. It is a bit of hour. So he's got to do part two okay. eventually later on in the year because he's busy. And I I, I really there appreciate you. There is a lot to talk about. How I, music is consumed right. now, and and should you do a project or an EP or a single? There's so much. Yeah. Now I remember that. Uh, Janet Sutton was yeah. also one of my guests. That's my she girl. Did, yeah, she, right, and I'm getting ready to go there right I now. did her jingle. Right. <laughs> and so, is there ever a time, now I know earlier you were saying that a music producer has their streamlined job, what they basically do. Right. Okay. But can you also consult on vocals? Absolutely, I do all the time. Okay. Yeah, I'll come here. So, you can have the baddest singer, mm -hmm. but they don't have any recording etiquette. Mm -hmm. So, I, so, it, so okay, then, like, now, okay. Like Keon, for example. Okay. I told him, how, there was certain parts in there, I told him how to sing the song and mm -hmm. gave him the runs to do, you know, which is real subtle because it had to fit. Okay, let's tackle, I'm going to ask a question. Mm -hmm. Larry, what makes a good song? Here's what makes a good song. <laughs> a perfect marriage of, to me, mm -hmm. of lyric and music. Mm -hmm. Lyric and music, where lyric and music meet. Sometimes the most simple songs are most, they're the most beautiful songs. True, yeah. true, true, true. Yeah. Now, uh, there is another question I want to mm -hmm. bounce back to. And someone had made a comment on one of my other pages. I had posted this question out, and I was saying that, you know, how, how does a, how would you choose a producer? And I want to kind right. of circle back because I just seen somebody right. put a question out there. I, now, mm -hmm. let's throw this part in there. Okay. They made the comment that, you know, find out how, you know, how their last um, single or CD or whatever they did, how mm -hmm. well that did, and that mm -hmm. would tell you whether you should choose them as a producer. I would disagree with that. Okay. How would, why? And here's why. Uh -huh. Doesn't have, like, CDs and all that kind of stuff right. out. Here's, here's why. Paul Jones said, definitely don't want the battery to go dead. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Paul. Okay, is that my nephew? I think so, Paul. Yeah. Okay, so now. Yeah, he got the guitar. Yes. All right, so let me tell y'all something. <laughs> Paul is a producer. Now, he Look, just Paul. did He just did Tim Tim White's recording. You, Paul? Paul, didn't you do Tim White's recording? Seriously? I yes. just seen you at okay, um, MRC. Okay, so now, here. So, <laughs> I'm gonna fin I'm finna get in family trouble right now. <laughs> All right, so my nephew is Lil Rodney, who's right. who's produced Just... a lot of stuff that y'all hear, y'all stuff y'all heard on Mary he Mary's, said yes. he did. and stuff y'all heard on, and he's hot. Stuff y'all heard, uh, 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 the pastor of the ship. I'm I'm being brain dead right now. The, the oh, ship. Jenkins. Jenkins. Yeah, right. he produced all, you know, a lot of his latest uh, hits. Uh, Lil Rod has, and he works with my block, and uh, and he has his own stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, then you got Lawrence, who, who is, is a genius on guitar. The lead, he, L yes, lead, lead guitar, oh and he's goodness. working on his single, and it, it, it's going to take you somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy support. And buy all of their stuff. I don't go, hey, 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 hey. Yeah, I, go to, I go to iTunes, I download. Right. right. But Paul, and I know I'll get back to, I'll get off this real quick. Paul didn't just get here. Mm -hmm. Right. So I did, on, on my movie, there is a in track on mm -hmm. it. And I'm going to stream the movie live on YouTube, but I'm also going to put my, my, uh, Cash app up there so, so y'all can support it. <laughs> support That's coming up, y'all. This is I need you to have them go to Uncle Larry TV. Okay, All go right. to Uncle Larry TV, y'all. But Paul came, and I did some. I did brass colors. Mm -hmm. So I played my brass colors. Paul came in here, 
and blew my mind. This is my own nephew, bass players. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I want to tell y'all is don't always look for a keyboard player to be a producer, right? Because okay. quiet as it's kept, Paul can get on the organ and keyboards and whoop that too. I heard him. I heard him. So, so he at MRC. I'm going to add Paul to an, the list of producers. Shout out to you, Paul. And uh, when you put that check in my name, it's spelled L-A-W. <laughs> no, but no, he's, he's on. But go ahead. <laughs> exactly, because that was a question that was posed. And right. I, I sometimes I think I can understand why right. they said that. Right. But there are a lot of unsung. Unsung. A and, lot of people don't know. A lot of people know me as a bass player. They don't know. Right. They don't know my skills here. Right. Right. And, and then when they come in, like, man, I didn't know you was, you know, I didn't know you was in this deep. Yeah, right. I've been doing it. Right. So the reason why I say you can't limit it to the last uh, production you heard, Paul last year is not the Paul from this year. To this year. Right. Because he's grown. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I would, that's why I was like, you can't. You can't just limit it to that. Now, if it's somebody, he's been doing this for 50 years, and his sound is exactly the same, you're you, you getting what you get. Mm -hmm. But now, you, if, if you want to be with a creative person, but that knows what they're doing. Okay. All right. Because, you know, I mean, I mean, and even in myself, there are a lot of directors and directresses that can teach vocals very well yes. and can take a little small choir mm -hmm. of people who can't sing. And right. I'm not the only one. I just right. so happen to be one that won something. Right. And they are very good at what they do. Yes. And you can say, well, I don't want them because they don't have this behind their name. And they can do the job just as well as somebody right. that has all of the recognition. Right. Just given the opportunities. Just given the opportunities. Exactly. I, I will say something. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told you this. And I'm going to say this. <laughs> I need brace a, yourself. I need, I need a tissue. No, but anyway, <laughs> but listen. When it comes to community choirs and state choirs, mm -hmm. there's an added problem. Okay. Okay, and here's the problem. We let emotions get in the way of what's best for the project. Number one, when you see a project or a song, you see that as a baby, right? True, especially if it's your first one. It's a baby. Yeah. It's a, every one of them is your baby. You ask any artist what their favorite song is on their on their project, mm -hmm. it's never the one that you hear on the radio all the time. I believe because that. Because it means something different. Mm -hmm. the, the best, my favorite song that I've written, you would totally be surprised of the backstory of it, on behind it. I had LaWanda Campbell sing it, mm -hmm. and it's called What a Happy Day. And I, I, I'll play it for you. Okay. It's an up tempo song. He still got to play the bass. It's, He's trying to get out of that. It's an up tempo song, but I was going through the worst hurt in my life when I wrote that song. And it's called Heaven because I was ready to check out here and go to heaven. Oh, wow. And so that's why I said, This is your baby. So now, you want to do what's best for your baby, right? Mm -hmm. So the problem that state choirs have. Is this you got a choir that's ready to record mm -hmm. because state choirs, you know, you got the you right got, director, they, right. they, you they know, will sing, they will sing. Now they're ready to record, but nine times out of ten, the musicians are not recording musicians, they are live musicians. So there's a difference, there is a difference. So now you go to a producer, and I used to be the state bassist that thought I was ready to record. And I wasn't. Okay. Right? So my feelings was like, oh man. Well, you know, but I'm a this this I'm a I'm a part of the choir. Y'all can't cut me out now. But I wasn't doing what was best for the baby. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So we gotta do what's best for the baby. And that song is your baby, right? Okay. Because putting the right musicians on the song will make or break it. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's right? true. Now I play bass. Mm-hmm. And I could slaughter my own music. But you know, on, on Keon's track, I got Lil Rod on bass. Really? That's Lil Rod on bass. Okay. Yeah, you know why? I wanted that feel. I wanted his feel on that song. And okay. that's what a producer do. A producer know when to get his himself out of the way. Because okay. you got to do what's right for the baby. Right? Okay. I, have, I know a slew of drummers, but I got Varro on that track. You know why? I wanted Varro on that track. Mm -hmm. I didn't want somebody simulating Varro. I wanted Varro on that track. Varro was the ultimate professional, gave me exactly what I wanted. And okay. so that's, and I, you know, and Lawrence, I wanted him on that guitar. But I made him play it 70s style. 
because he recorded three different tracks. But so that's that's what I would say about that. Okay, so then when you're you're recording, then that mean when you're thinking about recording, right? Then you got to then there's three to me in my mind. Just listening mm -hmm. for what you say, mm -hmm. there are three elements you need to consider: right. your musicians, your singers, yep. and the songs. Right. You know what. Um, what you what you want to do, what kind of, you know, because I heard somebody mention before and they were saying that when you have your C D mm -hmm. let, give me your opinion on this. Right. That each song should be different. Because you wanna have something on this is what I you wanna have something on each each song to reach different people. And then another producer said, No, it's best that if you stick with a, a common theme. Okay. You know what I'm going to so, say about that? Because I'm just, you know, when you hear yeah. stuff, you have to, you know, it's just we, like. We, we, I, uh, listen, this is, this is my philosophy and it's true in life. Everybody has brokers in their life. They broke and they want you broker. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to say behind that is consider the source. Okay. <laughs> consider the source. So what if I was, The what, person that told you everything should sound different. How many records have he put out and produced mm -hmm. is he a producer mm -hmm. does he know the music industry mm -hmm. does he not know of but he, know the music right. industry because it changes constantly. Uh, uh, constantly and i have to keep up with the music industry mm -hmm. it changes constantly mm -hmm. so in everything consider the source mm -hmm. right everything is not going to sound different. If you do 12 songs and every one of them sound different, no label would ever want to do you because they can't define who you are. Ah, see? <laughs> they can't okay. define your sound. Right, right, right. They can't, right. they don't know who you are. Right. Everybody has a sound. True. Everybody has a brand. True. Yep, everybody has a brand. That's true. Yeah, as, and, yep. that, and I, I'm I'll tell glad. you what, here's some homework. Go, and I know you ain't going to do it. No, go, listen, go back and no. listen to an old Marvin Gaye, Marvin Gaye album. It's one long song. <laughs> you said one long song. Now, I don't mean that everything should, should sound, sound exactly, exactly the like, same. But it should be, yeah. have your flavor, yeah. your personality. And, and maybe you need to do two albums because everything you want to say. So, like, right now, I'm in a creative space. So, mm -hmm. I'm just, like, creativity is oozing out of my ears. Mm -hmm. Then there's sometimes when ain't nothing happened. Right. You're sitting there going, I'm dry as a rock now. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Like it was, but everything I, that I have to say is actually not held in one genre of music. Okay. Sometimes I got to say something that's like Keon. Mm -hmm. Then sometimes I want to say something that's praise and worship. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to have an album that's got this sound, that sound, this sound, that sound. That's not. They're trying to be it. Like, yeah. So yes, that's or... why you put out an EP, okay, which is five to six songs, mm -hmm. or you do a single, okay, or maybe you just do a series of singles because that is where the industry—that's what the industry is calling for. Okay, so that explains why everybody's kind of going towards dropping singles as Absolutely. opposed to doing everything. What so, made the Tommies the Tommies? The Tommies was one of the baddest choirs in Chicago. Yeah, and yeah. when you hear the on the fourth note, you know what the time is. True. They have a signature sound. They have a signature sound. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, you know, and, and I think, I remember um, when I was working with the music and arts with the Hawkins. Yeah. And um, I worked there with, again. Yeah, again. They have a signature, signature sound. sound. And I know the musicians. Exactly. And uh, I call him Professor. Mm -hmm. Master Richard Smallwood yeah, oh, yes. was there. Signature, and signature sound. sound. And, you know, um, I was working with him. And I was kind of like, oh, you know, I don't really like the way I sound. And he just cut me right there. Yep. He's like, he was sweet about it. Yeah, yeah, he cool But guy. he was just like, no. Yeah. He's yeah. like, you need to be who you are. There's a sound in you. He's absolutely right. And if right. you don't let that sound out, we're going to miss what God wants absolutely. to happen. He says, so no, you do you. you don't do worry you. about how everybody. You do you. And, you know, it was kind of like, yeah. pow. Yeah. But then it was like, oh, yeah. oh okay. You know, if you <laughs> listen to uh, uh, my, my track I did, Dear Mama. Mm -hmm. That's a youthful sound. Mm -hmm. It's very, very youthful. right. But and the video was good too. Yes, yeah. and that's it's gonna we're gonna reprise that soon. Oh really? Okay. But that's the way God gave me that track. Mm -hmm. That's the way He gave me that track. Mm -hmm. And I did it that way. I didn't try to change it. Right. Because it, the inbox, 
the in the amount of inbox uh, messages. that messages that I got off of that song right. is a mind blowing. Wow! From and what what really messed me up was the age of some of the people. Really, church mothers. Really, yes, it was a nice song though. Church mothers, like yeah, this it really moved was. me. And so, I always this is one of the things I want to tell you guys about music. Do your music the way God gave it to you, right? I don't care if it sounds country and western. If God gave it to you that way, don't try to fit in a box. Mm -hmm. Because we're out of that, that, that time and dispensation. We're out of that. God has given people unique things to do. Just mm -hmm. like he gives pastors unique messages, he's given you unique things to do. Now, there's a lot of stuff I don't like. Especially mm -hmm. this, this the, the hard trap music. Mm -mm, can't stand mm -mm, that. Mm -mm. And, and I can't I can't stand depressing country music. My dog ran away, my wife ran away. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> you know. But there there's a lot of country that I do like. That tells a good story. <laughs> right. So, they still they tell stories. Yeah. You know what? We're gonna do part two because I'm I I still got the second half of the sheet okay. to get through. We've been here over an hour. Has it been? Yeah. Oh, okay. Time moves fast. But you're not getting away. I the just, base. I just the base. I ain't got nothing. The base. I the ain't base. Got the nothing. base. Put a track. He can put a yes. track on. And you know what? Just, Let's make her sing. No. He keeps uh -uh. just you no. are singing. Huh? No. I, you know what? Maybe I'll, I haven't even played this track. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll just play the key on this track. I don't, uh, I don't care what he plays. Uh, he just. I will, cause I want them to see you not, you not. They they've heard me sing. They sing me direct. I just want them to know. The way you said that, they sing me direct. Just a, the, <laughs> <laughs> you just said they sing me direct. You a director. I bet you when you talk to people, you are like, listen. I told y'all <laughs> that I was going to be late at church today. <laughs> I'll oh, come, with get me. Your, <laughs> come get your <laughs> I didn't mean to do oh, that. That's just reflex, everybody. <laughs> okay. But uh he needs to play the bass. I I just want them to get a taste uh, of the <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm gonna just try uh to play a little bit to this track if we can get these things right, okay? All right, so he's gonna get adjusted. Thank you all, all right. for tuning in with <laughs> He just busted me out like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I want I want to just him to play just so you all can get a feel for it. And then we're gonna come back in part two. After he gets through a lot of this that he has going on, he's in the midst of a recording and all of that. And I'm thankful that he took time, even though it took me time for him to get here, but he took time <laughs> to do this. And I appreciate it, and I want to uh, be cognizant of that. Thank you all for tuning in. Man, you, were, you were That's my father coming out. Yes, Ma, back me I up. Need <laughs> I need to. I need to just come to your dad's house and just sit with a with no <laughs> Can you teach me some of them big <laughs> words, <laughs> Pastor? Oh my goodness. So you all, thank you all for joining in. We're going to end with him playing a song for us. And you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. We're going to do part two later on this year when he has more time. I think I got everybody's questions. Didn't I, didn't I do that? Hey, shout out to Annette, Danielle, uh, Pastor Kenneth Lockhart, uh, Kathy, hey there, uh, Ann Fields, Roman Wells, Lockhart. Paul Jones. Paul Jones. Linda Mobley, Shanita, Kenyatta, um, Deatrice, hey there, uh, Mother Connie Harris Jones, my mama, Melissa, Elder Dakins Clark, Tim, Tim Terry, Professor Tim Terry, my other friend, I don't know how to pronounce his name, that's my uh, our fellow alto in St. Louis, Keep going. Uh, Mother Bernice, uh, da, 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 David Jones, Tracy Kincaid, yay, Hatcher Roy, Yay, um, Aura, isn't that your cousin? Aura, Aura, Aura's Aura. I thought she was your cousin. Ricochet, Bernice Wilson. Ricochet? Rika, that's her name. Oh, Rika. Ricochet. Like, Rika. Oh, oh. No, stop it. Kashan, thank you for tuning in. So glad to see you. My own cup, Courtney Sanders, the one that's, uh, what's his name, Pastor? The one you and David were talking about today? What's his name? I forgot oh, his name. Oh, uh, the comedian? Yeah, that's oh, his name, Courtney goodness. Sanders. Yeah. That's my cousin. He's now, another what, what, talented brother. What uh, city is he from? St. Louis. Oh, St. Louis. Yeah, hey, Ty. He's another talented cousin okay. I got. 
Uh, Lawrence Beasley. All right, Lady Deb. Aaron Simpson. Thank you all for tuning in. And there's so many other of you. I wish you would put your name on there so I can give you a shout out because you did stay here with us. And I hope that something was said that you enjoyed. And so now we'll I'm going to do a part two. Yeah, we got to do part two because this list, y'all, right. we, you know, we need yes. to touch bases on that. Yes. So we're going to come back later on in the year. Right. We're going to set, set up some time. We and have... you know what I'm going to do later on in the year? I'm going to do, we're going to do something special. We'll discuss that. Oh, okay. He was, for, he, he, for, I'm not singing. For, <laughs> I'm not singing. Uh, I will direct, for, but I will not sing. <laughs> for a choir that wants to do a single. Okay. Because the industry is not calling for albums. No, right not anymore. I don't want to do that. You are an EP, and EP is a half of an album. EP stands for it. Extended play. <laughs> but Danielle said if he needs a soul singer, I'm available. So. <laughs> <laughs> she put her dibs in it. Okay. <laughs> All righty. He's going to take us out with. What would you take? You're going to sing. He keeps doing no, great I'm things. No, I'm not singing nothing. Because I'm not going to play this track. All right. Well, you're playing the yeah, track, right? Nope. You stop me. Stop. He's taking us out, you all. Thank you so much. Peace. Love y'all. Come on. He keeps.